And you're very welcome back to the Agriland Pavilion here at the National Ploughing Championships in Rathaniska in County Leash. I'm joined here on the Agriland stage by James Sutton, the President of the National Ploughing Association, Chair of the Irish Grain Growers Group, Bobby Miller, and Agriland journalist Richard Halloran, who has been walking out and about amongst the ploughing fields this afternoon as well. And uh, I'm going to start with the ploughing, James. It's great to have not only the National Ploughing Championships, but the World Ploughing Championships happening as well this week. Yeah, uh, it's, it's wonderful, actually. Um, um, initially, uh, the World Ploughing was supposed to go to Russia, but we know what's, the issues were there anyway, and uh, we were contacted by the World Board uh, to see if we would be able to stage the World uh, in conjunction with our National Championships, and uh, we were delighted to take that job on, even though it entailed a lot of work, to, a lot of preparation, and that's sort of, we're, we're just delighted to have it here. We've got representatives from all over the world here. All over the world here, from New Zealand, Australia, from you know, from closer to home as well. We've uh, 28 countries here, but actually 20, only 25 uh, ploughing. The other three are here to observe and get a feel for what the championships is all about. Anyway, uh, so day one of the of the competition is on today in, in stubble ground. Uh, I was out there earlier on, and some very good work being uh, been uh, produced out there. Anyway, and uh, so the, the 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 marks from today's stubble competition will go forward uh, to the grassland uh, tomorrow and com combine the marks then to uh, to uh, you know a world champions our world champions will be crowned after that if you're a betting man any contenders to watch out for well i i, I might be a little bit biased in this but i have to say this is the sixth time that we have to, uh, we have hosted the world uh, planning championships here in ireland we've never had uh, an irish uh, uh, an irish man being crowned uh, uh, world champion on home soil, but I, I have a feeling that it's going to happen this, this time round. We have John Whelan from Wexford ploughing in the reversible class, and we have Eamon Tracy from Carlow uh, ploughing in the conventional class. And uh, listen, I, I can't look beyond them, but I, I think they will be, they will be pushed, but I, I'd be confident, uh, certainly, of crowning at least uh, one uh, champion here in Ireland, uh, world champion, uh, on this occasion. Richard, uh, I mentioned that you were out and about on the ploughing fields this morning. Uh, what was the atmosphere like? Tremendous. Everybody was in great form. I think everybody was particularly happy with the ground, uh, the plots that they had been allocated, uh, the conditions that they were ploughing in. Everybody was happy. I don't think anyone uh, will have a complaint in terms of the, the final results. I mean, luck will have nothing to do with this. Skill will, skill will come to the fore. I mean, there, there, there's, no, um, there's no other way of looking at it. But as I say, everybody's happy. The weather has just been tremendous. And um, yeah, it's all good. And I think just, I suppose, to broaden that out a little bit, I mean, um, there's a tremendous, if you look at, I suppose, tillage in that more general sense, there's a tremendous sense of optimism, I feel, for tillage farming, crop, uh, crop production in Ireland. And I mean, that transformation has taken place, you could say, within 12 months. And is that an optimism that you would share, Bobby Miller, from the Irish Grain Growers Group? I don't know if be as optimistic as Richard, but <laughs> <laughs> realistic. Look, uh, as Richard has pointed out, the tillage sector has a lot to offer. Uh, we've reduced, the, the, in Ireland, the area has reduced by 42% in the last 40 years. But the reality is, the tillage sector has a lot to offer. We, this year, 2022 and 2021, have been reasonably good years for the tillage sector. Uh, we are going into a very daunting year for 2023. And sure, we've been talking about fertilizers, they're probably the most common topic at the ploughing, uh, the costs for 2023. And I see that 2023 is going to be a trickier year than 2022. Has the um, tillage support scheme gone some way to, to help the sector? For a tillage specific farmer, it was, wasn't of any great use. Uh, if you have grassland, obviously, or access to grassland, yes, how does it help? But it hasn't been a great help to the tillage specific uh, farmer that's uh, uh, long term at the game. Uh, so we're hoping for change in, if there's a new scheme it's going to be announced uh, sooner rather than later. But uh, other measures have come in place, like the straw and cooperation measure has been very helpful to the sector. That's been very successful. Yes, and very run very smoothly as well. And we helped uh, put that in place. We're working with the Department of Agriculture, we instigated the idea in 2018 as part of the MAC curve plan to reduce emissions in this country. Uh, and tillage farming is carbon neutral already with a little bit of tweaking and we have a lot to offer as a sector.
Yeah, and uh, I suppose uh, speaking to tillage farmers, uh, Richard, you're, you're saying there's optimism out there, but as Bobby alluded to, inputs, it, it's a consideration for all sectors, particularly for people who want to have the confidence to grow and to buy fertilizer for next year. Yeah, well, you mentioned the word confidence. Confidence brings with it, the, uh, I suppose, this concept of risk and how do you manage risk. I mean, that is a major thing that has certainly been uh, communicated to me uh, through Chagas, through likes of the grain growers, individual farmers that, that, that you would be meeting here at the, um, at the championships. But to, to pick up on the, the point, the specific point that, 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 that Bobby made, the fundamentals are that there are schemes now in place, bespoke schemes for the tillage sector, and they can be built upon. I mean, I can't, I mean, how many reports have there been over the past decade looking at the future for Irish tillage, all produced against the backdrop of a, of, a, of a sector, of an industry that was going backwards. That's no longer the case. I think we've stabilized the ship. There are you know, this, the first signs that we're moving forward. And I think there is a, at least a recognition at government level that support must be given to the sector. But I think fundamentally, governments work around schemes. If there's not a scheme there, you've got a problem. Because there's, if, there, if there's no scheme, they can't allocate money or support in the way that they would wish to. Whereas the schemes are there, and as, you know, as we've just heard, the scope is there and we can build on those. Yeah, do you think there is an appetite, Bobby, to grow that tillage area? Is that coming from any new entrants into tillage or is it coming from existing farmers expanding? Uh, it's coming from the realisation of the importance of the tillage sector uh, because of the recent developments out of our control. So that's the main reason it's been driven, uh, in my view, actually. Yeah, and, and Richard, would you concur with that? Yes, I think there is great scope. I think we've, I know we've seen a 6% increase in the uh, area of land crop this year. Um, the rate bakeries, the oilseed rate bakeries has gone up. Over the past five years, it's actually doubled. And the figure that I'm hearing is 20,000 hectares will have been planted out this season. That, I mean, that, that's, you know, that, that's a turnaround figure relative to where we were. Um, but I mean, look, we've all got to be realistic. There are uh, choppy waters ahead, but I, I think the fundamentals are there for the future. And I mean, I've pointed out, if you speak to a bank manager today, they'll say, where's your five-year plan? Okay, 12 months from now, they're not interested in knowing what, you're, what, what you'll be doing in 12, 12 months. It's a five-year plan at least they're looking for. And if you look at it in that context, I think there's tremendous scope. Yeah, because farming is a business and most businesses operate more than 12 months in advance, as you said, it is a, a, a five-year plan. Um, I, I, yeah, Bobby. Yeah, just come back in there on a couple mm. of points. Uh, with the new common agriculture, we have a lot of information coming our way, new policy coming our way. The common agriculture policy here is not going to benefit the tillage sector. Since it was announced at the initial stages in 2018, we said from day one that the tillage sector is going to be hit hardest with the, with the convergence and the likes. Uh, so while we can be optimistic, uh, we need more realisation that the support has to go towards the tillage sector in the likes of adding value to what we grow. Is it too late for that now, Bobby, if we have a strategic plan gone to the EU? Yes, in that regard. And we've been at the, Irish grain growers have been at the, the table representing tillage farmers as best we can, often a, a lone voice at that table. Uh, and it is too late for this common agriculture policy. Uh, we've got some concessions as, uh, representing tillage farmers, but from day one, uh, uh, the South uh, was definitely was going to be a, a losing streak for the tillage sector. Um, so we're disappointed in the common agriculture policy. We're of other measures like the nitrates measures after being introduced. Uh, we worked hard to get changes made to that uh, for tillage farmers, because as far as we're concerned, they were unworkable. So while there's optimism, we have to work hard as, as tillage farmers to represent ourselves. And that's what, that's what Irish Grain Growers Group is about, representing the tillage farmer. Because for me personally, I didn't like to be being fourth, fifth and sixth on the agenda of meetings. So I want to bring tillage first and foremost. And it's interesting that you say that. And I think, James, I'll bring you in here as well, because obviously 
we're at the ploughing championships, ploughing as part of the, the tillage sector as well. And as Bobby alluded to, the, the whole issue of food security has come very much to the fore. And I think the general public as well has become a lot more conscious of, of how our food is produced, where our food is produced, and the need to domestically produce that food as well. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Most, most definitely. I, I don't agree with that. And, and as of course, uh, you know, that's what the ploughing championships, that's how it started out at the outset, is to upskill ploughmen and the importance of uh, good ploughing uh, in relation to getting the maximum yields from, from your crops, uh, etc. And particularly in the modern, uh, in, in today's climate, where we're, we're trying to minimise the amount of pesticides we're, we're using, uh, etc. So like good ploughing where uh, uh, soil is, is turned up to produce that seed, that seed bed for the follow-on crop, where all uh, weed seeds and trash and and maybe uh, some pests and diseases that are harboured in the weed in the weed crop is there is buried to a depth that is not going to compete with the crop that you're going to sow for water, light, nutrients, and space. So good ploughing is very very important, and you know that's at the fore of everything we do here at the National Ploughing Championships to make sure that it, it, it's an attempt to upskill our ploughmen. Richard, we're hearing about uh, min-till and no-till as well in terms for carbon-rich soils. Uh, what's the reaction been? Um, I think it depends on the part of the country that you're in and the soil type that you're working with. Um, I know a number of farmers have looked at min-till and have gone back to a more traditional ploughing-based uh, um, establishment routine. Um, and I think it's going to evolve. I think it, you know, the, 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 the bottom line is, though, that um, the tillage sector has a tremendously positive story to tell from a, a carbon footprint point of view. I mean, that's fact. Um, and I think that point has got to be taken on board. And if I could just come back, though, on one point that, that Bobby made about the common agricultural policy, I think one of the overarching themes to this new regime that we're looking into is the fact that there is more national flexibility allowed and we've seen evidence of that over the past 12 months and I think we'll see more of that and I would suggest strongly that there is scope to go to Agriculture House to talk to the Minister and get real change or changes made that are more amenable to uh, tillage farming. Um, I, I, wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't give up the uh, I wouldn't give up the ghost there at all. I think there is scope to keep, to keep campaigning for real change that's meaningful. Yeah, and Bobby, in terms of that proposal on carbon-rich soils, what are members saying back to you at the moment about that? Carbon, uh, we are learning about carbon, the benefits of it. Uh, soil is our key asset, and we're focusing back on, on soil again. We probably sort of lose, lost touch of what, how important our soil is. James alluded to there in the importance of ploughing your soil as a part of your integrated pest management system. And, and uh, a huge amount of work going on in Chagask in research into our soils, into yeah. the, the emissions that they can capture and also, I suppose, emit as well. Yeah, the, the role of, um, that tillage has in, for, for climate change is very important. Uh, I incorporate straw in my own soil at home that locks in carbon. Uh, the methods how I farm uh, will add to that scenario as well. Um, the types of fertilizer use, importation of slurry. Uh, we are back folks again, again on our soils. Uh, we actually have a very good discussion on tomorrow morning in our, site, our tent at 11 a.m. with two experts in their fields on soil. Uh, we, we, what is in our soils is, is, is phenomenal. In the, hand, in the hand of soil, the amount of life that's in that soil is phenomenal. And, we're in some ways re-educating ourselves as tillage farmers, as all farmers are, the importance of our soil and the role it can play to, on climate change. We lock in carbon into our, our soils, is, everyone is a winner. Well, it's, it's the building blocks of everything we do is the soil and, and also the, the building blocks. And I, I mentioned it earlier, younger entrance into to tillage. Is there an appetite for new blood into the tillage sector at the moment? Obviously, we see yes. people of all ages out in the, the, the ploughing fields today, but um, money talks at the end of the day and we have a very successful dairy industry here and if your young farmers starting out you're going to have to follow the money and family farms are going to have to follow the money but the tillage sector has a lot to offer a huge amount to offer we have a very big drinks industry in this country uh, that needs support from 
from farmer level right up to the very top, very top of the industry. We export phenomenally valuable uh, drinks into this uh, across the globe. Uh, just the, as big as the, the dairy sector, the beef sector, like we, we, we are well known for our drink in this country, a very big area. A lot of research going on there, we actually have involved in a project there called uh, Dabbing with the Chagas Lead, we're all in the drinks industry are coming together to, f to coordinate, to make it more successful from, from the farmer to the end user. And there's a lot of positive st stuff going on in the city sector, a lot of go very good research going on, uh, which will benefit the tillage sector but we do need uh, people to come on board educate themselves on the tillage especially uh, that's one thing i find when i'm at meetings the amount of people don't understand tillage and that's as a tillage farmer that's our problem to address as well as like being here today as we're, we're trying to make it punch about that just a short while ago from the icsa about farmers telling their own stories and, yeah. and making sure that the, the public know what goes on in, inside in the field or inside the farm gate yeah yeah there's a Definitely a little bit of a disconnect there that we'd like to reconnect with. You know, it's a lot of information coming towards farmers and that I we'd like to James, portray. Something in event like this is a prime example of a way to, to bridge that gap between the, the urban and the rural. And even there's people who live in rural Ireland who would have no idea what's going on inside a farm gate. Yeah, oh, without doubt, without doubt. And, and coming to the ploughing championships, you know, uh, I suppose it's, 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 it's part of a learning process for, for, for those people. And I know uh, I'm based up in North County Dublin there, but I know for, from a lot of the secondary schools who would pay visits down here on their gap year, uh, and there's so much information available to them here. They're working on projects on biodiversity and, and uh, soil structures and all that sort of thing. And uh, it, it, there, yes, there's a huge amount of, uh, all the government departments are, are represented here. There's a huge amount of, of information to be gathered here and to, to, to gain a greater awareness of what's required, uh, uh, you know, for the farmer to continue uh, uh, growing his crops and, and producing food uh, in, in a sustainable way. Richard, I suppose as we're, we're going to wrap this up, I suppose in terms of growing that tillage area, Bobby was saying it's schemes, money talks, we need the incentives for farmers to have the confidence to, to grow their operations and to expand. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and you need government buy-in. Um, Is that there at the moment, do you think, or has that come uh, as a result I, I of the war? I think it's slowly coming through, yeah. yeah. I think certainly the war, the war in Ukraine, I mean, let's be honest, food security is now an issue that, that wasn't there six, maybe seven months ago. And tillage is totally embedded within that scenario. Um, so my view would be, as the president has already told us, Ireland is home to some of the best plowmen in the world. I mean, there's no doubt that Ireland is also home to some of the best tillage farmers in the world. I mean, look, just look at the yields that we get year in, year out. We're top of the, top of the class, certainly in a European context. Um, the tillage guys, they're all top men, um, they, 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 they will grow their businesses, I have no, no, no doubt about that and I think crop production can look forward to a very positive future. Um, uh, Bobby, before I finish up, uh, in terms of fertiliser, what do you want to see the, the government do? Obviously huge concerns out there about the price of fertiliser going into 2023, doesn't look like it's going down anytime soon. Yeah, currently all the suggestions are that prices are going to remain very high. I think government should support the farmer at a farm gate level, not perhaps the fertilizer purchasing, but at farm gate level. Uh, and how they can instigate that, I'm not 100% sure, but they definitely need to put a little bit of confidence into 2023 for us uh, and uh, to have an opportunity now in this budget to do something for us in that regard. Uh, fertilizer is, is the biggest conversation piece here. I'm going to jump back into one a little bit of the conversation there. We're talking about youth, uh, gender balance. Tillage is very poor in gender balance, and we'd like to address that as well. Uh, uh, the, the ladies in this industry are e equally capable. They're often the backbone of the tillage sector when it comes to the, the finance, the running, actually running. The amount of red tape that's involved in tillage is, uh, is getting bigger and bigger. And we'd like, I, I, I believe that the ladies in this uh, industry uh, uh, should come more forward. Uh, James, I'll come back to yourself finally. Um, the sun is shining outside here in Rathaniska, but there's a bit of rain on the way. Uh, the advice for tomorrow, bring the wellies if yeah, you're coming. It, 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 it looks as though it's heading our way anyway. And, uh, you know, um, the 
final day of the world is going to be on grassland and uh, some of our competitions tomorrow on grassland as well. But yeah, pa uh, pack, the, pack the wet gear, uh, make sure you 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 plan for all eventualities. Um, I, I don't know, maybe it's not going to be as bad as what was first thought early on in the week anyway, but come prepared. And I think most people who come to our championships do come prepared uh, because it, we, we, we tend to get all sorts of weathers. But look, it's, it's great to get the first two days dry uh, for people getting in uh, to the car parks and getting out in the evenings and the car parks are in good order and uh, yeah we, we, we take a day's rain on the last day uh, look it's, it's, it's coming our way so we, we, we'll take it and, and we'll deal with that myself know. and Richard are going to put the child to Prague out now yeah, before we leave that would, that would, that would <laughs> this evening anyway. excellent well James Sutton the president of the National Ploughing Association Bobby Miller chair of the Irish Grain Growers Group and my colleague and journalist here as well with Agriland Richard Halloran thank you so much for joining us here on the live stream and that wraps up our live stream here today from the National Ploughing Championships in Rathaniska. Don't forget to log on to agriland.ie for all of the latest news from the championships. And we'll be back with you here on the Agriland stage from midday tomorrow. I hope you will join us then to meet more guests and we'll bring you more of a flavour of the atmosphere from around the site here in Rathaniska.